Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power cam. Let's go, man. This guy is crazy. from around the world and across the country She's in the from your own backyard this is the reality of law enforcement today on. for the next 60 minutes you'll be a witness you'll see everything an officer sees the fastest pursuits the scariest shootouts the most extreme and unusual crimes I need some help. ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. is the craziest and toughest job in the world. Tonight, you're gonna to see why. In Midland County, Texas, Corporal Ray Meek joins a high-speed pursuit. The driver of this car fled police when he was caught buying crack cocaine. He seems determined not to let two flat tires slow him down as he jumps from pavement yeah, we just over to, the, uh, south road. to dirt and back onto asphalt. But it's what he does next that concerns Corporal Meek. He just went to the floorboard. He buys all units, he just went to the floorboard. The officers in pursuit realize he could be reaching for a gun. I don't know what he went after. But what he's really doing is smoking the crack cocaine he bought just an hour earlier. The drugs take effect immediately. And this man's driving goes from wild to totally insane. Bouncing over rough terrain, the suspect cuts across grass and dirt as he screams past the baseball field. Next, the road-jumping runaway heads for the interstate. I'm in for this vehicle. Unfortunately for everyone on the highway, the drugs have also affected the man's sense of direction. We're going the wrong way. Shut down eastbound traffic. Suddenly, the worst-case scenario comes true. He races toward an oncoming semi. I've got an 18 winner. The truck's wheels lock up. But the suspect somehow manages to swerve onto the shoulder at the last possible second. The drugged up driver bails onto residential streets. More units join the chase. But the suspect seems unimpressed by his growing police escort. He dodges left, bouncing off a curb. Officer Meek sees an opportunity. But the crazed crack fiend squeezes through and blazes his own trail off-road. He can't go much further. The man doesn't realize he's just made things easier for the officers. The open field gives the police a clear shot at his two remaining tires. The bullets find their mark. We got four tires behind. As the suspect heads for the high grass. I hit them down tires, he's still running. His car's bare rims dig deep troughs in the ground. But the man keeps weaving until he simply can't continue his drug-fueled flight. There you go. We got it. We got it. In a heartbeat, Corporal Meek and the other officers converge on the car. 
and when they see the suspect isn't armed, they pull him from the vehicle. But while the officers are cuffing him, they realize the danger isn't over. The heat from the car's bare rims has set fire to the tall grass. The lawmen only have seconds to put the suspect in a car and clear the field. Corporal Meek fights through the smoke and gets his unit to safety. And while the officers wait for the fire department, Meek tells dispatch that this chase is over. This Lone Star loser smoked crack and burned rubber. But thanks to Corporal Meek and the other officers in this pursuit, the smoldering suspect was taken down before everyone's luck ran out. Bayshore, New York. Three men enter a gas station. One of them keeps watch at the door. One goes to the counter, and one goes to the back of the store. It's the perfect setup for an ambush. There are two clerks on duty, but both turn their attention to the so-called customer. It proves to be a costly decision. The robbers have no weapons, but they use their fists to get their point across. The clerks try to reach the alarm, but the vicious robbers quickly eliminate that option. The smart move is to give up the money, but a cash drop hasn't been made today, and there's over $2,000 in the register. The clerk tries to stall them. He gets a right cross for his efforts. The robber won't be denied. He tears the register from the counter and smashes it against the floor. Within seconds, he pockets the entire two grand and calmly strolls out. Fortunately, neither clerk was seriously injured. Encouraged by a score this huge, these brutal robbers may strike again. And it only takes a second to let your guard down. But Crime Stoppers New York is fighting fire with fire, offering up to $1,000 for information leading to the arrest of these criminals. If you have any knowledge of these men or their whereabouts, please call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-220-TIPS. Topeka, Kansas. Shawnee County deputies pursue two male suspects in a car with Minnesota plates. The driver refused to stop for a minor traffic violation, a telling sign that these boys have something to hide. Still north down, going by White Lake. The suspects rocket down the city street, right into a pack of cars at a red light. They're getting caught up in uh, traffic. But they plow their way through, leaving the primary unit stuck in traffic. Move forward! Seeing the deputy stranded, one of the backup units races up to take the lead. Looks like uh, 872's got the lead and we're going northbound first now. An unmarked unit pulls ahead to take the secondary position. They all have to drive at treacherous speeds to catch up with the suspects. A camera in the unmarked unit captures a terrifying close call. The officer barely avoids disaster. Even with all this horsepower on their tail, the suspects remain far ahead of their pursuers. Now they're headed straight for downtown. Deputies resort to driving on the wrong side of the road just to gain ground. Slow moving traffic hinders the units, costing them even more time. When the officers finally get around the cars, the suspects are nowhere in sight. The officers hesitate at the next intersection. They don't know which way to turn. Then suddenly, the answer comes screaming right at them. The suspects come within inches of demolishing the unmarked unit. The deputy whips a U-turn and becomes the primary unit once again. 653 in the lead now. We're going westbound on 12. The officers push the patrol cars to the limit. Finally, they catch up with the suspects. Uh, it looks like we're going to go northbound on Topeka uh, now, northbound on Topeka. In spite of the suspects' breakneck speeds and wild maneuvering, they still find officers in their rearview mirror. 
It's time to make a tough choice. We're slowed down to 40 now, 10th and Topeka. 10th and Topeka at about 40 miles an hour. The suspects pull over. Officers are ready for anything from these maniacs. But when they open their doors, all they do is surrender. The two men were in town to send out a drug shipment. Having already unloaded their contraband, they thought there was nothing left to tie them to the deal. They didn't realize that a recovered shipping invoice would lead officers to the package they sent out that morning. A package containing enough drug evidence to put them away for a long time. When this out-of-town drug team tore up Topeka, Shawnee County deputies showed some teamwork of their own. Looks like uh, 872's got the lead. And put an end to their trailblazing days forever. Next. Suspect is driving on the wrong side of the road. On world's wildest police videos. That's 10 pounds. Bad guys go for broke. Plans for a stick up get cut short and a ferocious getaway chews up a tire. This car is grinding along on rims. It's crooks rocketing, racing, and ramming. This is how things get ugly. And they're headed your way. This is how things get ugly. Look out, look out, look out. When bad guys run, each turn is treacherous. Every step is risky. And the danger is alarmingly real. Woo! No, did you see that? Burbank, California. Well, he's been running at speeds of over 90 miles per hour. The California Highway Patrol pursues a red convertible that may be stolen. But that's not how this chase began. Simi Valley PD tried to stop this guy for speeding. He would not stop, so now it's a failure to yield and felony evading. The suspect bails off the highway, but once he's on the surface streets, he adds reckless driving to his criminal resume. The suspect is driving on the wrong side of the road. The police learn that the man behind the wheel is a transient who's wanted for forgery. Here comes the stop sign. He's approaching the sign, and he just keeps right on going. He clearly is not stopping. But just in case he's not in enough trouble, the suspect takes it one step further. He's northbound. He's on. He just threw something out of the car. The suspect just caught something. The driver keeps going. But police recover a small bag from the bed of the pickup. It's full of white powder. Realizing he isn't going to lose the cruisers. Whoa! No, did you see that? He cut that van off. The man decides to make the most of his disappearing freedom. He gets back on the 134. He's picking up speed now. Over the next hour and a half, the ragtop runaway leads police on a high-speed tour of L.A. County. From the valley... Sliding right through three lanes at a time. Through the city... We seem to be exiting on Sepulveda. There's a police unit there. Oh, God, that was close. And finally ending up on the Pacific Coast Highway. He's actually going under the entrance to the Santa Monica Pier, and there he is. It's a perfect road for a scenic, relaxing drive in a convertible. He's running in the turn lane. This is extremely reckless. However, this suspect makes sure no one on this highway is relaxed. Weaving back into traffic, heading up to Mesco. No, no, he's making a U-turn. Back on PCA, turning right on Sunset. into Malibu, the man blasts up the coastline in the wrong lane of traffic. There he goes again. Oh, he can't keep doing this. Even when pedestrians run into the street, this suspect refuses to slow down. There are people in the street. This is how things get ugly. But when the criminal in the convertible cuts up a winding canyon road, he plays right into the hands of the police. We can see a unit up ahead, and it looks like there's another on the other side of the bridge. Just ahead, an officer lays down a spike strip. The suspect sees it. A moment too late. 
When the driver swerves, the highway patrolman yanks the spikes under the car, blowing out both tires on the right side. Front and rear, totally shredded. It doesn't take long for the car to start leaning and smoking. This car is grinding along on rims. The suspect hops back on the freeway, but it's too much for his crippled convertible. He looks like he's pulling over, and there is smoke pouring from under the hood. Considering how many laws this man has broken, police take no chances. California Highway Patrol in position for a high-risk felony stop. The suspect gets out of the car, enjoying the last of his freedom. Well, it looks like the suspect has something in his mouth. Uh, he's smoking a cigarette. Moments later, the man is in custody, trying to explain why this isn't his fault. I wasn't speeding. I wasn't speeding. And while he hasn't been convicted of anything, speeding is the least of his worry. This drug-ditching driver... The suspect just caught something. ...broke laws in a half a dozen cities. He's actually going under the Santa Monica Pier. ...during his criminal tour of L.A. County. This is how things get ugly. But the highway patrol took out his tires, canceling his rambunctious road trip. This car is grinding along on rims. And what could have ended in tragedy? No, no, he's making a U-turn. Only ended in a traffic jam. When a driver won't allow the police to search his car, that doesn't make him guilty. But it does make an officer very suspicious. On a December day in Houston County, Georgia, Deputy Joe Sindek makes a simple traffic stop. How you doing, sir? Your driver's license, step out, please. But this man and his passengers seem to be just a couple of friendly fishermen. You're doing it good. Uh, well, it was a good one yesterday, about an eight pound, large pound. The men are clean. We're pretty good. But before they go, Deputy Sindek has a standard request. Interstate highway coming from the south going to north. Well, the heavy population of uh, people transporting narcotics and drugs, stuff yeah. like that. I'm certainly not accusing you of doing that or being that type of person. Do you have any objection to me searching for narcotics or drugs? Well, I don't. Being you're the driver, you're responsible for the vehicle. But I'll, like I said, I'll still talk to him. Yeah. Right. With permission granted, the deputy has the passenger get out. Backup arrives, and the search is uneventful until Sindek goes to check the trunk. Suddenly, the men take back their consent. The suspects claim the only items in the trunk are wrapped Christmas presents. Well, I'm not going to tear up your presents. Regardless, the men won't budge, and the officers have a hunch why. They got Sindek calls for a drug-sniffing dog. Within minutes, he has the answer he was looking for. Deputy Sindek shares the bad news with the suspects. The dog alerted in the area of the trunk and the passenger door. So I'm just going to have you stand right here, but I'm going to continue on with the search. Immediately, the deputy finds something other than holiday gifts. As the men are taken away in cuffs, Sindek shows the others what he's found. These bags aren't Christmas presents, and that's definitely not mistletoe inside. Four large bags containing marijuana. Because Deputy Sendek played this traffic stop by the book. Do you have any objection to me searching for narcotics or drugs? These men were found guilty of carrying nine pounds of illegal Christmas cheer and spent the next three holiday seasons behind bars. Coming up. On world's wildest police video. He's down on the rims now. Over the top. Looks like he's climbing a fence. On the line. Under fire. Cops don't stop. Till the job is done. Next. Oh, there he goes. Crime flares up. The dirt road at the dirt road. When hot footed felons. For the hills. And a wheel of steel fireworks is about to ignite. Technology. In the fight against crime, law enforcement agencies use cutting edge tools. It means that criminals can get caught in ways they never thought possible. Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
A car speeds by on a bare rim as a desperate driver runs from a traffic stop. But if he thinks he can escape into the darkness, he's in for a big surprise. A police helicopter tracks the suspect using a forward-looking infrared camera, FLIR for short. The driver's metal rim grinds into the pavement at 80 miles an hour as the helicopter's night vision follows the pyrotechnics. When the crippled sedan speeds around a corner, it can't hold the road. The driver foot bails into the darkness. A normal chopper would lose him. But with Fleur, he's as plain as day. When the suspect escapes over a fence, the pilot has his work cut out for him. Uh, he'll be coming out at the zoo. Got it, got it, got it. The fugitive jams through the park until suddenly, this guy needs a rest. So he hunkers down in a dark corner. I can see him. It looks like the city security guard is out with him at the zoo property. A security guard makes his rounds, unaware that he's within five feet of the crouching man. And because the guard doesn't notice him, the suspect thinks he's secure in his hiding place. That's it, Paul. We're gonna make entry through the fence. But the pilot guides officers to his exact location. As soon as you guys go through the fence, follow the fence to the south, and you'll run right into it because he's hiding in the corner. As police cut through the chain link fence, yeah, I'm on the left side of the fence. two officers make contact with the suspect. Backup units are ready just in case the desperate man bolts. After a few tense moments, the unarmed man is ready to climb back over the fence and give up. Subject in custody. This deflated driver thought he could outrace a traffic ticket. A lot of but he soon learned that you can run and run and run some more. But with Fleur on your trail, you can't hide. I can see him. Ottawa, Illinois. Anytime Officer Brent Rolson patrols a speed zone, he's prepared to pull over some unhappy customers. But being prepared doesn't always make it easier. Sir, could you remain in the vehicle so you don't get hit? Pardon? Can you remain in the vehicle so you don't get hit? I got a daughter stranded. That's why I'm in a hurry. OK. The impatient man complies until Officer Rolson brings him the citation to sign. OK, sir, the reason we're sitting on Erickson is because we've had complaints of speeders, OK? What I need you to do is I need you to sign right here. I'm going to let you post this. What am I signing for? This is a citation. That's what you're posting your bond. No, 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 you guys got so much to do. You're just making so much. I'm in a hurry. The man was caught going Never twice over. the speed limit. And he thinks the officer has some explaining to do. I want to know your name. Is your name on here? Yes, it is. Officer Rolls. You're going to hear from me. That's fine. My badge number 17. Uh, wait, what kind of it's on the bottom of the ticket, sir. No matter how polite Rolson is, the driver wants to make things difficult. I can't read that right there. Right there. You go by the badge number. What's your I name? I need Officer Rolson. I, so, I told you that before. I know you did, but I don't see him right. The officer gives him his copy of the ticket. It's the final straw. Copies. I can't believe you guys. Well, sir. Neil, everybody going to work and everything else. Sir, that's part of our job. Drive safe. Buckle up. With those parting words of encouragement, Officer Rolson thinks he's done. But he's wrong. I like to talk to you sometime alone when you're not on duty. If I in, refer do that. in reference to what? This kind of stuff. What's that? Doing this my job? Guy's back in the corner. Doing your well, that's part of my job, sir. I can't believe you call that doing part of your job. You're going 43 and a 25, oh, sir. I don't even believe that. Thing. Well, you can go to court, then. That's why you're giving a court that's date. That's what I'm going to do. That's, I have that's a what lawyer. I, I that's will what I would bring do. it with me. That's what I would do. Have a good day, sir. This isn't over yet. Now oh, the man sorry. tries to lay down a guilt trip. What? What's that? I got a daughter stranded down there in the east side. You want to follow me? I'll take you down here. He isn't prepared for the officer's reply. If you'd like me to, I can assist you in that. OK. The frustrated man decides to go it alone after all. And that's just fine with Officer Rolson.
In Spartanburg, South Carolina, Deputy Randy Hollifield clocks passing traffic. So far, it's been a pretty slow night. But that's about to change. I heard loud crash, and I looked back over my shoulder and saw this guy coming through the middle of the, uh, the triangle where the grass and the rocks and everything was at. The deputy takes off after the swerving, speeding car. The Honda, but when he hits his lights and siren, it becomes clear the driver is not in a cooperative mood. Still headed towards Walnut Grove Plantation, and he is not stopping. The suspect might as well be blind, weaving into opposing lanes. I'm attempting to get him to stop. And blowing through every stop sign without any hesitation. We're taking a left on those Spartan Road. The man refuses to slow down for anything, including a railroad crossing. Flying over the tracks, the driver demolishes his suspension in a shower of sparks. At that speed, uh, I was just really hoping that he was going to be able to keep the vehicle in the, in the road. The deputy knows this chase has to end soon. The good news is the Honda's headed directly for Hollifield's backup. Dear boy, you probably need us. But the suspect spoils the officer's plans. He leads the deputy on a series of senseless turns. Dragging Hollifield farther and farther away from his backup. The thing that I'm really thinking the most is to make sure that I do what I need to do in order to go home. The suspect is forcing a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, but Hollifield won't back down. The runaway driver bombs down a private dirt road. It's a rough ride. It almost shakes both cars into spare parts. But worst of all, there's no way for the deputy to tell his backup exactly where he is. The dirt road is a dirt road. Suddenly, the road dead ends, and the suspect makes a break for it on foot. 1080 on foot. But Hollifield isn't about to let this guy get away. You better hold it, buddy. I'm coming. The suspect does the first smart thing he's done all night. He gives up. You lost your mind. Yo, I know I got you. It turns out the man is drunk. Get on, car. But that's not an excuse. In fact, it's a crime. This drunk driver led one deputy on a strut busting, shock rocking pursuit. But when he ran out of road, and ran into the woods. Deputy Randy Hollifield chased him down you hold me, buddy. and ran him in. Next. Spark flying, spark flying. On world's wildest police video. Uh, he's going into a very heavily wooded area. A hooligan goes batty. A driver cuts up the pavement. It's hard hitting. Heart stopping action. And it's coming your way next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. With miles of speeding and sparking, it's road construction madness. When criminals tear down all the rules. Raise your right hand. America has always welcomed people who are looking for freedom and a better way of life. But when immigrants enter our country illegally, they get a different kind of welcome. Temecula, California, a van full of illegal aliens swerves through early morning traffic. Still northbound. The suspects cross the border in the pre-dawn darkness. But in the daylight, there's nowhere to hide from the pursuing police. Officers deploy spike strips when the chase moves to a winding road. Okay, apparently he has gone over a spike strip. And suddenly, the van skids to a violent halt. Seen again, the van can't make the curve as it takes a chunk out of the roadside embankment. Oh, they're gonna bail out here. In the middle of the dust and confusion, the doors fly open. Three of the border crashing suspects scramble up the embankment, but a CHP officer takes one of them off the hill and into custody. The other two men split and run off. We're gonna stay with him. With choppers buzzing overhead and the sounds of sirens getting farther away, 
the man sprints into the heavy brush. Uh, he's going into a very heavily wooded area. And disappears. Uh, he's either taken off his shirt or that's a second suspect. A news chopper spots the other illegal alien who managed to escape from police. Yeah, this is the second guy. He's climbing the hill here up towards a, a residence. With his mind set on escape, the man vanishes under these trees, hiding in a thick tangle of razor-sharp cactus. Meanwhile, back at the site of the crash, police begin the long process of searching the rest of the suspects. In all, 13 people are removed from the eight-passenger van. Moments later, they're loaded into another van, this one belonging to the Border Patrol. High above, a police chopper radios down to ground units. CHP unit overhead will be directing officers in. A cruiser pulls up to the house where one of the fugitives might be hiding. That's where we saw one of the suspects. Moments later, the officers spot their man. But the suspect in blue isn't found. When illegal aliens break the law, their quest for the American dream can become a nightmare. Gonna bail out here. And even though this man ran far and fast enough to get away, it's going into a very heavily wooded area. He's starting his new life in America as a fugitive. Golden, Colorado. On a warm, peaceful night, some people just naturally look suspicious. A bundled up man walks in, and the curious clerk senses that something's wrong. Is it that cold? I'm walking about three miles. Sure enough, the suspect has something up his puffy sleeve. Robbery! 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 A bystander pounces on the suspect and yanks him from the counter. But the thief flashes a gleaming blade. The good Samaritan backs off. The nervous suspect runs. This man boldly stepped into a dangerous situation but he had enough sense to know when he was in over his head. In Charlotte, North Carolina, the Good Samaritan in the blue shirt tangles with this shirtless troublemaker. This time, the concerned citizen faces off with a menacing drunk driver. The bare-chested boozer is no match for this armchair crime fighter. Here again, this Good Samaritan has the right idea. He keeps the belligerent drunk at bay and prevents him from getting back in his car while someone else calls the police. Later, a trooper commends the brave man. The driver came out of the vehicle very erratic and proceeded to attack and fight the, the citizen that pulled over to make sure he didn't get back into the vehicle. This man knew he had a fighting chance to keep a drunk driver off the road, and he took it. While this guy realized that he couldn't defend himself against a knife-wielding robber, both Samaritans displayed sound judgment. Most importantly, they lived to tell about it. Cache County, Utah. Pursuit of a suspect on the warpath. The man has a history of violence and is reportedly armed. Deputies learn that he's come all the way from Idaho to confront his ex-wife. She lives only miles away. Spike strips have blown out three of his tires. Can you guys grab that off the road? The man is riding only on rims and brake drum, but he won't let that slow him down, even as his truck falls apart beneath him. While other units race ahead to the ex-wife's house, pursuing officers continue to dog the suspect. They want to do a pit maneuver. But with a truck on bare rims, a spin-out could spark an inferno. Suddenly, the situation becomes critical. The man has reached his ex-wife's neighborhood. The officers quickly hatch a plan. Patrol units block any road they don't want the suspect to take. The primary deputy charges like a cowboy herding a stampeding bull. The driver thinks he's keeping one step ahead of the officers. But this bull is about to get pinned in. Concrete barriers block the suspect's path. 
Officers prepare for a dead-end standoff. But incredibly, the driver finds a gap and squeezes right through it. The crazed man is now one turn away from his ex-wife's house. The deputy goes headlong after him. Suddenly, the officer gets help from an unexpected ally, gravity. The truck tries to go uphill, but it can't get any traction. The bare rims and brake drums spin helplessly on the pavement. Another unit cuts off the driver, but the man still isn't ready to surrender. Now he takes advantage of gravity and tries to roll backwards out of trouble. But there's a squad of deputies blocking the way. Within moments, the overpowered suspect is taken into custody. Spike strips turn this man's four-wheel drive truck into a one-wheeled nightmare. But thanks to police teamwork and the law of gravity, this violent offender lost his uphill battle. Next on World's Wildest Police Videos, a bad driver goes ballistic. A wrong way sedan goes berserk. And police go the distance to make it all stop. Next. Bad boys raise hell. A loaded driver mows down some markers. And cops need to get a grip when push comes to shove. A riot can be like a fire. A few violent offenders ignite the larger crowd, and pretty soon the police are dealing with an explosive situation. Rotterdam, the Netherlands. The home team has won the league soccer championship. 250,000 fans join in the celebration. But Rotterdam's soccer hooligans are notorious, so police are called in to make sure things don't get out of hand. As a precaution, undercover officers make their way through the enthusiastic crowd. But so far, everybody's just having a good time. Suddenly, uniformed police find themselves under attack. That's all it takes to turn this big party into a free-for-all. The difficulty, of course, is that as the crowd gets bigger, so does the amount of violence. Police are barely able to get children and their families to safety as the crazed fans loot stores and break car windows. They even stop the trains by blocking the railroad tracks. Anyone in a police uniform becomes a target for attack. Officers do what they can to disperse the angry mob, but they are forced to protect themselves against the attackers. Police in uniform can't single out the troublemakers who are keeping this riot going, but the undercover officers can. Moving unnoticed through the mayhem, they spot the instigators of this violence and take them into custody. Undercover policemen can go into a volatile situation because they don't wear a uniform. They're aided by the element of surprise. Unfortunately, several unlucky bystanders suffer minor injuries. But 50 rabid rioters are taken to jail. Water cannon clears the stragglers off the streets. The city of Rotterdam was left in shambles, the day the world's most destructive soccer fans lived up to their raucous reputation. But the next time this surly crowd thinks of letting off a little steam, they'll look twice at the guy standing next to them. He may just be a soccer fan, or he may be an undercover policeman who's going to put them behind bars. Coralville, Iowa. Officers spot a suspected drunk racing through the streets. The intoxicated driver notices police trying to close in. In his drunken stupor, he panics and takes an insane risk. He enters a construction zone, a dangerous place during the day, a deadly obstacle course at night. An officer catches the suspect off guard. He rockets by on the left and takes the lead. The suspect weaves left and right, trying to pass. But officers have him boxed in. Suddenly, the man drives up on the curb in a shower of sparks. 
He mows down warning barriers like a two-ton bowling ball. He cuts wildly to the right, desperately trying to escape. But beyond those cones lies an off-road nightmare. Up ahead, a dump truck blocks the road. The driver flashes his lights. Realizing he's running out of time, the suspect makes a last-ditch effort to pass the cruiser on the left. He has no idea he's speeding straight towards a concrete barricade. The officer holds his ground, but now he's headed directly for the big rig. Locked onto a collision course, police still won't give up, but neither will the suspect until it's too late. <laughs> Seconds from hitting the truck, the suspect collides with concrete pylons. Officers rush the driver and drag him from the wreck. They quickly take him into custody. This chase is over. A road under construction meant nothing to a driver under the influence. And these officers dutifully followed risking everything to get one more drunk driver off the streets. Next, on World's Wildest Police Videos, a car without a driver takes a cop on the ride of his life. When officers are patrolling the streets, they do things by the book. But when they come across something that isn't in the book, all bets are off. In Evansville, Illinois, doing reverse donuts in a parking lot is a good way for a driver to get arrested. Unfortunately, this car has no driver. For police, this poses a unique challenge. If they try to jump in through the open door, they could miss and wind up under the wheels. A policeman breaks a window, but the door has childproof locks. He almost trips, but when the officer recovers, he pulls a move usually reserved for stuntmen. Scrambling across the top of the driverless sedan, the officer still can't stop the car. Another officer rushes to help, but amazingly, the daredevil policeman has things under control. Even though centrifugal force is trying to whip the officer onto the pavement, he swings his feet inside the car and finally hits the brakes. It wasn't easy. But after it's over, the officer is all smiles. Why get the big bucks? <laughs> In 13 years, this is the wildest ride I've had. The subject is running. I'm in pursuit of this vehicle now. Sparks flying, sparks flying. From the desperate hours of the night. <laughs> into the brutal hours of the day. What's your malfunction? Criminals cross the line. Suspect is driving on the wrong side of the road. From danger. This is how things get ugly. To terror. Robbery! Robbery! From rage to violence. But no matter how hard or how long they run, their running always takes them straight into the long arms of the law.